So one of the problems you get with a full-size truck is the entry and exit and the height it is off the ground. So you can see it's, it's pretty high off the ground. So yeah, I've, I've just decided to go with a steer well on the back of the door. So, it's fairly heavy. It's about 30 kilos. I want to motorize it so I don't have to lift it up and it's too high to reach up once it's up there anyway. So as far as motorizing it, I want something cheap and fast and quiet. I found these things. This is one I bought online which was broken. I paid $30 for this little guy. They two motors, so 15 bucks a motor. They're nice and quiet. They've got quite a lot of torque which they need to lug fat kids butts around. As soon as they're broken like this, the value of them drops significantly. If they catch on fire, you'll get them even cheaper. So I've just run away and welded up this little guy. This taper is so that when the door's all the way out, it, it pulls a lot of force on the rope. Um, additionally, when I want it to stop at the end, I don't want it to come to an abrupt halt. I want it to sort of slow down. So one of the issues with the style of motor, you can't just put power on it. They're brushless DC motor. They need some sort of commutation. You need a driver. So I bought this little driver here. They're pretty cheap. Um, looking at the build quality, it's quite poor. These tracks here are far too thin, so I might just beef those up a bit. It doesn't look like it's got any external protection diodes other than the diodes that are already in the MOSFETs in here. I, I might mod it a bit. Uh, it's nice and cheap, so I want to get familiar with these. So I've made up this little guy. He will fit inside the, what do you call it, the style of the ladder. And I made this little guy, which is the, a hoop of wire with a nut welded on the end. And I 3D printed this retainer thing. Um, so that will enable me to turn the bolt without this whole thing here turning. And then I'll chuck my rope around there. you will go down the style, around the end, and this here is going to give me an adjustment so I can adjust the two ropes so it'll be even. So I've made this little guy, he's just got a skateboard bearing in there and it's just going to be a little lever to open the door latch. I'll just show you how I'm going to wire it up. I'm just going to use a relay for now. Um, a relay, if you don't know, it's just a little electronic switch, it's got electromagnetic coil in it, put power on the coil and the relay contact. So we'll just draw that. I'll draw it a bit differently to how it's drawn on here just because I don't like how it's drawn on here. This here is going to be negative. A wire from here, which will go through a resistor, through a low resistance resistor, 
and that will go to negative as well. This wire 30 will go to the motor drive and there will be obviously negative off the motor drive and 87 here will be the positive supply 24 volts and 85 will go to my remote so when I push this button here power comes onto the coil the coil switches 24 volts goes to the motor when I let go it switches back so this resistor here is going to just dissipate a lot of energy from the motor which will enable it to fall down slowly when I do a controller I'll change it a little bit from that so here's my wheel motor I've just machined that straight to put this clamp on here I've put some I've machined the back of this like a sprocket that's in case I decide to put a secondary lock in here there'll be a little pin that can just drop into here and put a torque arm on here We can imagine that's the truck deck and the door is here, the ladder is here and the hinge pin is right here. So the problem is we've got the weight or the force transmitting on this side of the pin which means we have to get an opening force to get it at least to that angle. Okay, so with that issue, I need to push the door open. I sort of thought I'd start playing with some ideas. I found one of these, it's a door closer. You can wind these up and they put quite a bit of pressure on. It was nowhere near strong enough to push the door open. So I thought I'd try one of these commercial opener, door opener things, door closer things. Still not strong enough to open the door. They're pretty strong too. But I had some of this lying around. It's um fiberglass rod and it's quite springy, so I thought hey, that might be a great way to open the door. Unfortunately being a round rod, uh, not very good at being a leaf spring because of the second moment of area thing. Normally convenient, in this case inconvenient. Basically the second moment of area means that if you double the thickness of something, you multiply its rigidity by eight. Um, but what it means is that the, the thinnest parts on this rod are going to be at the greatest stress, so then it's, it's likely to break in, in not long. So I ordered some of this stuff, uh, just fiberglass flat bar, and it's it's pretty stiff, it is stiff. It's 5mm thick, uh, I don't know, 25-30mm wide or something, and so I'm going to use this as my leaf spring to open my door. I'm going to use two of them actually. I've cut a little rebate in here, a little rebate either side to lock it in place. I'm just going to have a bend like jeepers, I'm weak. I'm going to have a bend like that to, to push the door out made up these little rollery things to, to roll on it and made up these little brackety things I put a little radius up in this part here um, and that enables it to, to bend around the bend radius is not particularly tight
So just a quick nosy around here, the motor, I've tested at 24 volts, they're a 36 volt motor, uh, gives around 16 newton meters of torque, which equates to about 60 kilograms of pull on here and about 110 kilograms of pull over this side. These motors, I think you could well overrate them, you could overpower them significantly for short periods, so that's cool to know. In the description below, I'll put lots of detail and links and stuff like that for information about this. This is 6mm Dyneema. Well, actually, it's not Dyneema, it's the Chinese version, so it's about 70% as strong as Dyneema. Possibly good for about 2 tonne. Got a, a rope tied to here, which comes down to here for a exit. So this is the control with a speed control on it, but that's all just temporary until I make up a proper drive for it, proper control. This is the torque arm. Torque arms are brilliant for mounting slow speed motors. They, it's just an arm with a bit of rubber on the end here, a rubber isolator. They allow for any slight misalignment in the motor without having to worry about coupling and full alignment up in, in here. And that's allowed me to get this narrow space. I'll yank on the string, open the door, and you'll be able to see it open. So you'll be able to see there the torque arm just taking up the slow misalignment in the motor. All right, so the sun's just setting. I've got the motor wired in. I've got the springs hooked up to it to open it. Let's give it a go. What? Um, that's amazing. It worked great. That noise in the beginning, by the way, I sort of dubbed over. So it is, it is actually pretty quiet. It's built a little bit like a seven-year-old's made it at the moment. This is just a remote winch. So, yeah, a little bit crude. Um, in the future, I'll make a controller for it so it, it works properly. Let's have a good opening it. Oh, a bit slow to open, but yeah, when I make a controller, I'll, I'll make it so it can it can go down quickly to start with and then slow down toward the toward the end. That's pretty cool. It, uh, yeah, it works great. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. If you like this build, consider subscribing. I'm going to be doing a bunch more sort of novel, unique features on this truck. So um, it'd be great to have you along.